In this video, we're going to learn about fractions. Let me show an example of a fraction. So, a fraction consists of two numbers separated by a line. That line is called fraction bar. Now, the top number of the fraction is called the numerator. Numerator. And the bottom number of the fraction is called the denominator. We can view fractions two different ways. So we can view fractions as so one way as a number that represents a part. So it's part over the whole. So what that means is that, let's say if I have a pizza and I slice it into eight equal slices. And let's say I eat, you know, I'm going to highlight, I eat three slices. So the portion of the pizza that I ate can be expressed by the fraction three eighths. So the denominator will always represent the total number of parts in the whole. Total number of parts or pieces or slices, whatever word you, you find appropriate to use there. And the numerator is the number of parts that we choose, or in this case, the number of highlighted parts. Number of parts parts highlighted. So 3 eighth. This fraction represents 3 eighth, part of the whole. And then the second way to view a fraction is, is in terms of the division operation. So division. So when I have, let's say, fraction 16 over 8, then the fraction bar represents division. So that's the same as 16 divided by 8, which is 2, right? In some cases, we can easily perform this division, right? Um, also, if I have fraction, let's say, 4 over 4, and now since I know it represents division, I can treat it as 4 divided by 4, that equals 1. But what if I treated not as a division, but part of the whole? Well, that means that this whole has four parts, and I choose or I take or highlight four parts out of four. So four parts out of four, it's everything, right? That's the whole. So that's why we get one that represents the whole. Now, if that makes sense, then we can actually generalize that. If I have in general, a fraction that has the same numerator as the denominator. So now we're going to write a few, a few rules for fractions. So if I have something or anything, I'll use A for anything on the top and that same, same thing in, on the bottom in the denominator, then this kind of fraction will always be equal to 1. So these are the same. Now, what do you think if I have a fraction with zero in the numerator and then anything in the denominator? So, so zero over five, zero over seven, zero, zero over 100, anything. What is that fraction equal to? Well, since again, fraction represents division, zero divided by anything is always zero. So in other words, if numerator of the fraction is zero, no matter what denominator it is, that fraction always equals to zero. And finally, what if um, I have fraction that has zero in the denominator? What can we say about that kind of fraction? So anything in the numerator, but then zero in the denominator. Well, as we think about this fraction in terms of division, then we have to think about it as zero div uh, as a or anything divided by zero, right? But what do we know about division by zero? Well, that's an undefined operation. So 
that means that in this case, it's, all, it's also going to be undefined. And we just can remember it as the rule is that every time when fraction has zero in the denominator, that fraction is undefined. Next, we're going to talk about simplifying a fraction. I'm going to give you an example. So let's say I have a circle, or let's say pizza, that I slice this way, and then I eat, well, I'll show it by highlighting, I highlight this part. Now think about what fraction represents the highlighted portion. And then I'll have another pizza of the same size next to it. And that second pizza I will slice this way. And I'll highlight one, two, four slices here. So what fraction represents the highlighted portion in the first case? Remember, a fraction has two parts. Now, the denominator represents the total number of parts. So, in this pizza, we have a total of two parts, right? Two slices. So, it's two on the bottom. And the numerator represents the number of highlighted parts. Well, it's only one that's highlighted, so it's one over two. Okay, how about the second one? We have a total of eight parts. So, I'm going to put eight in the denominator. And one, two, three, four, four in the numerator, right? So, four eighth represents the highlighted portion of this pizza. But what can you say about those two um, parts? Well, what can you say about the amount of pizza that I ate over here and over here? Do you see how it's the same amount? Then how come we have two different fractions representing the same amount? Well, these are actually equivalent fractions. These two are called equivalent fractions. So 4 eighth equals 1 half. And then we say if fraction 4 eighth gets simplified, then we're going to obtain 1 half. So it got simplified. Now to simplify a fraction, let me show how it's done. To simplify a fraction, you have to find a number, well, you have to find the largest number that divides both the numerator and the denominator. So here we have 4 and 8. By what number can we divide 4 and 8? Well, there are actually two options. We can divide both of them by 2, and we can divide both by 4, but we need to find the largest number. So in this case, 4 is the largest number. If I take 4 and divide by that the top and the bottom, then 4 divided by 4 is going to give me 1, and then 8 divided by 4 is going to give me 2. And that's how I obtain 1 half. And we say that fraction 1 half is in lowest terms, is a fraction in lowest terms. And that means that it cannot be simplified any further. So I cannot reduce numbers any further. Can, can be simplified any further. Let me give you another example. Let's practice simplifying a fraction. So, for example, let's say simplify and let's try fraction 15 over, let's say, 18. So, to simplify, I need to find the largest number that divides 15 and 18. So that number will be 3, right? That's actually the only number that divides 15 and 18. So I'm going to make a note for myself. If I divide 15 and 18 by 3, 15 divided by 3 gives me 5, and 18 divided by 3 gives me 6. So fraction 5 over 6 is an equivalent fraction, and it's in the lowest terms, it can be simplified any further. How about this example, 20 over 49? If we try to simplify it and try to think about numbers that are dividing both 20 and 49, we're not going to find one, right? So I can only divide 20 by 2, by 5, oh, by 4, 
right? I'm trying to think about everything that divides 20. Uh, 10 and 20 itself. But none of those numbers divide 49. Well, that may happen. And that means that this fraction is already in, in lowest terms. So we can't simplify it any further. Can't simplify. Right? It's in lowest terms. So this means that not every fraction can be simplified. But if you can simplify a fraction, then you should go ahead and simplify it. So all final answers should be given in fractions that are in lowest terms.